Okay, welcome to Math 110P. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the introduction to functions as your first video uh, prep video. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to start with part one, which is just a discussion of what is a relation. Think of like a relationship and association. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, here's a, it's kind of a word problem. Suppose you go to a gas station. And at the gas station, it's 350 per gallon. Okay. So how does a relation work? So what we're going to do is we we kind of cons uh, we use what we call like the black box method, as in a a relation is a black box, and you put something in it, and it gives you something else. Okay. So that's what a relation is. In this example, it's uh, buying gas. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, the number of gallons. And then when you buy the gas, out comes the cost. So for example, let's just do this. Uh, if we put in, and I'll say four gallons, how much would that cost us? Well, four gallons at 350 a gallon, so 4 times 350 gives us $14. So let's go over here and put that in. So number of gallons and the cost. So we put in 4 gallons, it's going to cost us $14. Okay, so that's exactly what a relation is. It's we're associating something, the number of gallons, with uh, kind of an output, which would be the cost here. Now another thing to, to consider here is the what we're plugging into our box is our call our input, and what we're getting out, which hopefully you can guess, is the output. Okay. So input input number of gallons, output, the cost. Let's go ahead and try uh, another one. So say you buy two and a half gallons. Okay, so how much would that cost if you spent two and a half or bought two and a half gallons? So two and a half gallons at 350 a gallon gives us 875. Okay. Uh, if we bought say 8.25 gallons. How much would that cost us? So again, you're just going to multiply that by 350 uh, and money rounds to two decimals, so it's going to be 28.88. Uh, there you go, that's, that's a relation. We plug in the number of gallons, our input, and we get the cost, our output. Now what we could do is we can write this as an equation because that's really what we're doing. In our head, we are doing this, where x is the number of gallons, so we call input our x, and the output our y. So anytime we took the, the number of gallons, we would multiply it to 350, and that would tell us our y, or our cost. Go ahead and try another relation. So here we have uh, the city and a team. So we got Chicago, Detroit, New York, Arizona, Denver. Uh, their team, Lions, Broncos, Jets, Cardinals, and Giants. Okay, so all we're going to do now is we're just going to associate um, the city with the team. We have Chicago which goes to the Bears. We have Detroit. Let's just use the pen. Detroit go to the Lions. We got New York that will go to the Jets. But we also have New York going to the Giants. Uh, Arizona to Cardinals and Denver to Broncos. All right. So again, that was our association. Again, we associated Chicago with the Bears, Detroit with Lions, and so on. The difference here 
is New York. I notice that the city of New York is associated with two different teams. Okay. Uh, still a relation, okay. but that's going to lead to a problem in the uh, next few uh, minutes. So that's all we need to know right now is that we took a uh, relation as our input, in this case our city, and the team is our output. And in this particular example, New York, the input, has two outputs, uh, the Jets and the Giants. All right, so let's talk about a function. A function, here we go, a function is a rule that assigns every input one specific output. So here's our two examples, which one is a function. Um, so I gave, in this, the, the gallons and the cost one, I use different inputs now, but I believe that this should be true. So, ask yourself this question. Does every input, input, have one output? 5 goes to 1750. Good, one output. 8 to 28, one output, and so on. So right here, this is a function. It satisfies the definition that every input can only have one output. Now if we go back here, you know, Chicago went to the Bears, Detroit went to Lions, and so on. Our problem was that New York went to Jets and Giants. And because an input has two outputs, because again, we're only allowed one specific output. This has two outputs, so not a function. Let's talk about domain and range. Domain is the set of all possible inputs. Range is the set of all possible outputs. So here's an example from your textbook. A level of education, so we got uh, didn't get into high school, didn't finish high school. This is uh, graduating high school, some college, and then a college grad. And these are the associated incomes. Uh, I suppose we can draw here uh, the associations. So obviously, you know, if you want to make, on average, if you want to make more money, you want to have a graduate college or at least get some college in. All right, so the domain is just all the, the inputs. Okay, so our domain is then all of this. So it would be, you know, less than ninth grade. I'm going to shorthand this. There's a lot to write. Ninth through twelfth. Uh, high school. Some college. and then college grad. All right, and then the range would be all the incomes. So these incomes here would be our range, because they're all the outputs. Uh, I don't want to write them down, but I think you can just put them down as a list right here, and these would be all your outcomes, which would be our range. So I said here, remember that a relation is just an association between a domain guy and a range guy. Right, I'm just going to call them guys. So you got a domain guy and a range guy. So sometimes we actually look at ordered pairs. Remember, these are points on a graph. And the first one, if you remember how points of a graph work, is an ordered pair X and a Y. And remember that we're associating X with your domain and Y is your range. You know, input, output. So with the x, if you have 1, um, let's see, 3, 5, 7. So there's our domain. 1, 3, 5, and 7. And then their associated y values would be 5, 7, negative 2, and 9. Now, if this is what I gave you in the previous example, okay, is it a function? Does every input have one output? Yeah, right? You have nothing crossing over. You have, um, that's kind of a weird way of saying it. I'll, I'll, the next example will be better. 
But here, every every single input has one output. So my domain is 1357, all the x parts of the coordinate. And the range would then be all the outputs, 5, 7, negative 2, 9. OK. So let's try this one again, or it's a different one, sorry. So we have we have negative 3, negative 2. Again, I'm writing down all the x's. All right, notice that negative 3 is already in there. So I don't write it again, because it's already there. And then the corresponding y, we got 9, 4, 0, 1, and 8. So let's go through. Negative 3, we now associate with 9 because of this. Negative 2 goes to 4. 0 goes to 0. 1 goes to 1. But what happens here? Well, that says negative 3 also goes to 8. So not only does it go to 9, but it will also go to 8. All right, this violates our definition of a function. Okay, so that's all you got to do. Just check to see if there's an input that goes to more than one output. If, if you have something that goes to more than one output, or what, so I should say, uh, another way of saying is, goes to two different y values, then it's not a function. So how can I tell if a, or an equation, how can I tell if an equation is a function? Okay. Ask yourself the following questions. What values can I plug in for x? And again, that would be our domain. And what will an x value ha ever have to y value? So let's take a look here. If if we we've done this before, we called it the t table. If you remember this. And what we did was we plugged in an x value to get the y value. So if we plug in zero. No, you get 4. If you plugged in 3, you would get negative 5. Again, I'm just plugging 3 into this. So negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5. All right, you can just keep doing this. If you plug in 10, you get negative 26. If you plug in negative 2, you get uh, 6 plus 4 is 10. All right. So now, this isn't really a strong reason to say this is a function, but can you tell that no matter what x value you plug in, there's no way you're going to get the same y value? Okay. Um, and we've graphed something like this before, and we know from last semester that we won't ever get uh, the same y value from x value. Let me rephrase that. You won't ever get um, two different y values. Now let's go with that. Two different y values from the same x value. If you plug in an x value, if I plug in zero, I'm going to get four. Can you get anything else? I mean, is it possible to plug in x equals zero and get something other than four? No. So every input has exactly one output. So what would something have to look like to not be a function? <clears throat> Perfect example, and this is the one that we actually use almost all the time. Give me an x value. Well, you're not, you're not here with me. I will pick an x value. Let's pick uh, 4. Okay. So if, I, if x is 4, what y values? Will this uh, can be what y values can I get? So basically, what could you square to get four? Well, I can square negative two, right? Does this work? Yeah, it works. How about four and two? So we got four and negative two, and we got four and two. So if I plug both of these in, it's going to work. So the relation works. But is it a function? And my answer is no. Because input has two different outputs. Bad. 